Don't forget, you can reach the latest episode of Potomac Watch anytime. Just ask your smart speaker. Play the Opinion Potomac Watch podcast. From the Opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Welcome back. It might be useful to talk about some prosecutions for mishandling of classified material. And some of these cases are surfacing again in the context of people trying to understand how regular civilians get treated when they don't handle classified material according to the laws and regulations. And some of these cases involve vast quantities of classified documents, something like 500 million pages. There was a case somebody got nine years for having that stuff. And some of them don't, though. There's one from February 10th, 2022. It is a civilian worker for the Pentagon who was detached to the U.S. Embassy in Manila. And she took some classified documents to her hotel room where she hosted a party. Apparently, there were two foreign nationals at the party. These documents were secret level. After that was discovered and she was fired from that job because of her mishandling, they did a raid on her and they found a notebook where she had handwritten notes from meetings she sat in on when she was at the embassy. And this is from the U.S. Attorney's Office news release. The notes contained facts and information classified at the confidential and secret levels. Investigators determined she did not send the classified notebook via secure diplomatic pouch from the U.S. Embassy in Manila to Hawaii as required. Instead, she personally transported the documents to Hawaii unsecured. And Kim, the result of this is a three-month jail sentence for this woman. And there are other cases you can find where people who are low-level employees who are not handling this stuff with great care end up in jail because of it. Yeah. So a couple of things, I think, come out when you look at these cases. The first takeaway is that the Department of Justice does take very, very seriously classified documents and the need to follow the rules when it comes to handling them and storing them. And anyone who you've ever spoken to who's ever worked in a White House or worked in the federal government can tell you about the training they get on that, the rules and the general culture that is there every day that reinforces the need to handle this material carefully. I think the other thing you see from some of these cases is that the Department of Justice does make distinctions based on the level of the crime, as it were. You mentioned this case of the woman who had a few documents and she ended up getting a $5,500 fine and three months of imprisonment. That is not nothing, that it does matter. But then you compare it to this person you had mentioned. It was a former government contractor, a guy named Harold Martin, and he took home a huge number of digital copies of classified materials. And while it doesn't seem he ever shared it with anyone, it was an extraordinary amount of information. And he is the one who is now serving a nine-year prison sentence. So it does feel as though different prosecutors look at the level of the mishandling, the amount of time it went on, because that particular contractor I mentioned apparently had been mishandling some of this classified material for nearly 20 years. But I do think that nonetheless, even though the press is very very interested in all of this right now. And you started this by saying, how are regular folk, how are they treated when they have a situation? The reality is, is the president and the vice president aren't regular folks. And there are different rules that apply to them in some scenarios. And so I'm not quite sure some of these examples are entirely relevant to some of the discussions we're having now. Notably, Harold Martin, this contractor that Kim is mentioning, here's a quote from the U.S. attorney who tried that case. For nearly 20 years, Harold Martin betrayed the trust placed in him by stealing and retaining a vast quantity of highly classified national defense information entrusted to him. And that U.S. attorney was Robert Herr, who has now been appointed the special counsel. So he has tried a case like this in the past. But to Kim's point, I mean, it's true. The classification system exists under the president's authority. And so that's obviously a different case. And I think from what we know right now of President Biden's handling of documents and of President Trump's handling of documents, it was not a huge amount of material in either case. And it seems like they had them in their possession. They were not on a laptop or something like that that was connected to their AOL account. And I don't see very many parallels to either President Trump's or President Biden's situation 
in the cases that we have in public. And that's before you even raise the question of prosecuting a former president for mishandling material that was from his time in office. So where does the Justice Department go here then if it seems pretty inconceivable that these investigations are going to end with charges? You know, one thing that really needs parsing here is whether either of them willfully retained the documents or whether they were both in their own ways just kind of arrogant and sloppy and cavalier about U.S. national security. I mean, recklessly handling documents is not nothing. As I can tell you from my time at the White House, watching the way and the care that people in most presidential administrations handle documents is really something that should make most citizens and taxpayers proud. There's enormous care given to it. People look at them only in secure locations. They most certainly don't get carted around or carried from office to office or, you know, left on desks. That just doesn't happen. And I think the narrative here on the left is that Trump intentionally stole the government documents and that he had any number of potentially nefarious purposes at hand. And look, his personality kind of lends itself to imagining those kinds of motivations. But as far as anyone has heard, there's no actual evidence of that yet, right? So the bottom line is that they've both been caught inappropriately possessing these highly classified government documents. But any indictment of either of them would require the Justice Department, I think, to assign a motive. Thank you, Colin and Kim. Thank you all for listening. You can email us at pwpodcast at wsj.com. If you like the show, please hit that subscribe button and we'll be back tomorrow with another edition of Potomac Watch.